Anda menyaksikan Teknolog CNBC Indonesia bersama saya Safri Nanasution dan telah eksklusif bergabung uh, bersama kami di CNBC Indonesia Chief Architect Tools for Humanity Adrian Ludwig. Hey Adrian, how are you? Hi, good, glad to be here. A pleasure to have you in CNBC Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. So um, the CNBC Indonesia really would want to get familiar with your company. So tell us what the Tools for Humanity does, especially in Indonesian market. Sure. So our project started six years ago. Uh, founders of the company, Sam Altman, Alex Blania, became aware that the rate at which artificial intelligence was advancing meant that it was going to have an impact in the average person's life. Uh, and in particular, that you needed to have the ability to know whether what you're interacting with online is a real person or an AI bot, as they like to say. Uh, and so we've been working on technology over the last six years to make it possible for anybody in the world to become a verified human uh, and use that identity in a private way on the internet. That's a very nice company. I haven't mentioned that, but very nice name company, Tools for Humanity, to mention us and to rem rem reminding us again about humanity and which one is real human. Uh, that's just the simplest way to say it. Yeah, I mean, that was the core, was how are we going to make <laughs> the world work for people, is yeah. what it comes down to. So how do you see the Indonesian market um, in a way? It's a great potential. It has a great opportunity with 270 million people, a lot of populations, yep. but there's a lot of challenge geographically and then the literacy from uh, about digital literacy for the peoples of Indonesia, but how do you actually see the Indonesian market for tools for humanity? The way we see it, Indonesia, like you said, is a geographically complex. It's a very large country, um, one of the top five countries in the world in terms of population, and incredible uh, focus on use of technology. Mm -hmm. right? It's a vibrant economy. Uh, and so what we've seen uh, in looking through you know, our, our sort of lens on the whole world is um, stronger use of social media here, more games mm -hmm. being played here than almost anywhere in the world. And so for us, it's an incredibly attractive market to make sure that your population, uh, our population is prepared for AI and the interactions that we have on the web. Oh, wow. One, wonderful. Thank you so much for that um, <clears throat> opinion. Um, Adrian, you are here for just several days. That's right. So tell us about your visit. So I'm here. Uh, we are beginning to launch operations in Jakarta, uh, and then eventually we'll be expanding to all of Indonesia. Uh, we are currently in about 30 countries around the world, so really excited to have uh, people in Jakarta able to go to an orb, uh, become verified, and begin having access to the world network. Mm, tell us about the orb technology as well. So the orb is basically a spherical, very fancy camera. Um, it takes picture of your face, uh, it takes pictures of your eyes, and then uses that to verify that you are a real human and also to confirm that you're a unique human. Uh, and that is the core of what's necessary for people to be able to use the web in a, a safe way uh, and be able to differentiate a real person from a bot. Okay. Um, in terms of um, digital identity and then <clears throat> um, challenge in the digital landscape. Yeah. From your perspective, from Tools for Humanity perspective, how do you think the digital identity evolving, especially in the AI era? The existing approaches to digital identity uh, assume that you're a human. Uh, and that's the core change that happens as AI picks up speed and capability, is that that assumption is no longer true. Uh, and so that's where we've had to introduce what we call proof of human or proof of personhood, where we're able to confirm that someone is a real person uh, and then in a private way allow that information to be used by websites, by other services. So you know that you're playing against a real person when you're playing a game or you know that uh, on a dating site that this is not somebody who's created a hundred different accounts, it's a real person that you could potentially go on a date with. Uh, and how does this orb technology can solve this problem, especially in real use cases in our daily basis and more specifically in Indonesia? Yeah, so the orb doesn't solve the problem. Um, what the orb does is makes it possible for other technology companies to begin to solve the problem in their particular service. So we give the piece of information that's critical to a social site, to a gaming site, to a delivery service, so that they can then use that as part of their broader service. And so there's two things that we're doing in Indonesia. One is making it 
possible for the average Indonesian citizen to go get signed up. Right? Make it easy, make it accessible, uh, and, and simple for them to do that. And the second is talking to entrepreneurs uh, and those who are building services, um, talking to the government that is providing services, and making it possible to connect that identity to those existing services as easily as possible. So it's very broad cases of, of utilization for this or technology. Yep, that's exactly right. It's a, it's a core, it's similar to when the internet became available. We had to have companies come talk about how you could use the internet to improve your business. What we're doing is talking with companies about how proof of humanity can improve their business. But in the future, you see that this technology is essential. Oh, absolutely. I think right now we're already beginning to see an acceleration of the use of AI to commit fraud, um, to trick people. There's things like deep fakes where someone creates a video that looks like someone else and then tries to trick you into giving money. Uh, or we see um, something that's called astroturfing where there's lots of uh, attempts to manipulate people's opinion by creating all wow. kinds of uh, comments uh, on a website. Um, so we're definitely seeing it already. And so it's going to be critical to have uh, the ability to tell people versus not people. You mentioned that your company has been operated in 30-ish yeah. counties. Yeah, <laughs> 30-ish, yes, that's right. That's right? exactly what I said. <laughs> it yeah, is. Right. Um, um, so tell us about um, the stories of your company in, in those countries, especially the countries that has quite similar background or demography, just like Indonesia. Or, I mean, the emerging markets like us. Yeah, so I think one of the countries where I think it's, it's interesting to think about whether it's similar or not. Uh, I've recently spent a bunch Quite of time similar, probably. in uh, Argentina, okay. uh, which there are some elements that are similar. Uh, it's an emerging economy, uh, a lot of focus on growth and the opportunities yeah. in the rest of the world. It's also geographically large. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the country that we've been operating about nine months at this point uh, and is the largest population of people who have become verified. We're now at a point where we're seeing companies in Argentina building applications that specifically allow um, donations, that allow uh, games, that allow learning, uh, and using that in the context of the World Network. So a lot of work on uh, sp basically applications that are specific to their population, which is pretty exciting. When did you get in first in the Argentina? What year? Uh, early 2024. Oh, early 2024. So it's just about a year now. Just about a year, and this one, this year, 2025, is this your first penetrating the Indonesian market? Yep. So we're just launching in Indonesia this week. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. Especially, we're so excited for that. So, um, again, from your point of view, um, what are the biggest challenge users face in protecting their digital identity? The biggest challenge is um, just that they need to use it everywhere. Um, the way the existing identity infrastructure works, um, websites want to know that you're a real person. And so they ask you a lot of questions. Where are you from? Do you have a national identity card? Uh, what's your address? You know, those kinds of questions. And so for those sites to protect their users, they need to know a lot. Um, and unfortunately, they don't want to know that. They just have to ask it. Uh, and so what we think is really important is to have a new technology like Proof of Human, where all you need to say is, I am a real human. They're able to verify that. And then you can safely, securely, and very privately use their services. Um, and again, about your technology, Adrian, um, compared to the other technology that is also um, um, being used for um, um, t testing whether it's digital identity or not, yeah. so what makes your technology so special? The focus on privacy. Uh, there are a couple things that we've done that are very different. Um, most identity solutions um, take all of the identity information and they put it in one place. And then when you try to use it to access a service, that place, you know, their database or their, uh, their identity service, knows that you're connecting to some other application. Uh, what we've done is designed the service using the blockchain as a way to not need to interact with our service when you go to your social media site. So you don't have to connect to World. You don't have to connect to Tools for Humanity in order to go to your social network. You go to the social network, it connects with the blockchain and confirms you're a real human, and then you're able to interact with it. And so it's uh, as private as it can possibly be, which is very different from existing identity solutions. 
and um, tell us also about your visit in Indonesia. This couple of days, so who did you meet, and then what is your, I mean, lowest hanging fruit purpose, especially in the several days? Yeah, one of the most important things for us is to make sure that we have you know, talked directly with the people. Um, so we've been doing a lot of meeting with media, uh, and then the other thing that we're very interested in is making sure that the government uh, is working closely with us. Um, so met earlier today with uh, ministers uh, from the social empowerment organization uh, and uh, learned quite a bit about the aspirations that Indonesia has for succeeding in the world uh, as AI becomes more and more empowering for the people here. Um, and so it was really inspirational to hear the words from Gusamin as he was describing you know, the future of technology evolution and the role that Indonesia is playing, both in terms of services that are being built. It's been amazing watching Gojek and dri uh, Grab driving around and doing that delivery that you know, wouldn't have been possible 10 or 15 years ago um, and is really driving the economy now. Uh, and thinking how AI will create similar opportunities for Indonesia in the future. So it was really inspirational for us to, to hear that conversation. And also very interesting to hear what t Tools for Humanity will do for Indonesia. But we